What's up, Brian Tong here, and it's official. Apple just announced the all new M5 chip and will debut in the three new products that we expected with a new M5 iPad Pro, a new M5 MacBook Pro, and a new M5 Apple Vision Pro. So let's start with the actual M5 chip to lay the foundation of its improvements and what's new, and then work our way through the new products and some things you should know. Now I'm gonna say that the M5 is absolutely more than just an incremental speed bump. According to Apple, it delivers over four times the peak GPU computer performance for AI compared to the M4, and that's because it features a next-gen GPU with a neural accelerator in each core to handle tasks even more efficiently, an even more powerful CPU, an even faster neural engine, and a higher unified memory bandwidth. So let's break this all down a little more. It's still using the latest third-generation three nanometer technology, and we're still just talking about the M5 here, not the M5 Pro or M5 Max chips. It has up to a 10 core CPU, which Apple touts as the world's fastest single performance core on the market with 10% faster single core performance compared to M4, and then 15 to 20% faster multi-threaded performance over M4 as well. It also has improved its neural engine and nearly a 30% increase in unified memory bandwidth to feed this beast at 153 gigabits per second. Now the biggest thing here is the leap in AI performance and specifically, it's the addition of a neural accelerator in each GPU core. So how does this apply in the real world? Because the reality is that if you're doing email, web surfing, word processing, and some photo and video work, uh, you won't be affected too much. Where this is really gonna come into play is with higher end, pro level applications and gaming. So let's start with gaming. This is truly a next generation GPU that has new enhanced shader cores for better graphics performance at up to 30% better than M4. It also has Apple's new third generation ray tracing engine and a re-architected second generation dynamic caching. So that means more realistic lighting and reflections in games with smoother gameplay. It also means 3D apps like ZBrush have more realistic visuals as well. Everything is just gonna be running faster and add a higher fidelity and be more responsive. Now, if none of those things make sense to you, then you're probably good with where you're at with your MacBook Pro and iPad Pro. This M5 is really catering towards even higher end performance because you're looking at someone here who is still using an M1 Max MacBook Pro. Now, the best way to describe its advantages is that the M5 does everything better depending on the task. So 3D apps and games like Cyberpunk 2077, which Apple uses in their demos for gaming, those are tapping into the new shaders and third generation ray tracing engine. Tasks like video upscaling in an app like Topaz AI or using the enhanced speech feature in Adobe Premiere Pro, those are taking advantage of the new neural accelerators of the GPU and better GPU performance. And when I describe some of those types of things, you know if it's catering to you or not, or you just want the fastest new toy available. But this is more than just a speed bump, especially if we're talking about the GPU in the M5. Okay, let's talk products now, and we'll start with a new M5 iPad Pro. Yes, it has the M5, and I think this is really gonna make a difference for, again, high-end users of apps like ZBrush for 3D modeling or Procreate, uh, and even video editing with DaVinci Resolve for color correcting in real time. I feel like the M5 makes the biggest difference for pros on the go who are using the iPad Pro as a workhorse to get away from the confines of a desk and still do their work there. Now the iPad not only gets the new M5 chip, but it's getting the new N1 wireless networking chip for Wi-Fi 7 support on the iPad Pro for the first time, plus Bluetooth 6 and Thread. It also uses the new C1X cellular modem from Apple for 50% faster data performance compared to the earlier C1 as well for connectivity. And let's hope it doesn't have some of the same issues that iPhones had initially where internet connection would just drop off even if it showed you had a Wi-Fi signal. I'm talking about the iPhone 17, the Air, and the 17 Pro. I will still sometimes get a hiccup once in a while on my iPhone Air. Now the SSDs in both the iPad Pro and MacBook Pro have faster speeds, and the iPad Pro will have up to two times faster read and write speeds, plus the 256 gig and 512 gig storage models come with 12 gigs of RAM, and the one terabyte and two terabyte come with 16 gigs of RAM. 
The new M5 iPad Pro also gets fast charging for the first time and charges up to 50% in about 30 minutes with a 40 watt adapter or higher. Plus, the iPad Pro can also drive external displays at up to 120 hertz. Design wise, port wise, yes, it's the same. And I don't know where you are in your upgrade cycle because we know how good iPads are across the board, but I have an M4 iPad Pro and this thing is tweaking me out to control myself from getting one because I think all these incremental upgrades do add up, but yeah, I have self-control. Yes, I do. Now you can pre-order it now. It's still the same starting price at $9.99 for the 11 inch and $12.99 for the 13 inch model. They will be available in stores on Wednesday, October 22nd. All right, we've got two other M5 products to go, but before we do that, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, TP-Link. This is the Deco B5000 dual band mesh Wi-Fi 7 system that's a simple and affordable way to bring Wi-Fi 7 to your home. Now this is their entry level system that easily covers most homes with over 6,600 square feet of Wi-Fi coverage. That means no more dead zones whether it's an apartment or most family homes. Now this dual band Wi-Fi 7 system delivers five gigabits of combined speeds and is backwards compatible with all generations of Wi-Fi and works with any service provider. It connects over 150 devices from your tablet to your TV or your home security system. Now I've got so many devices as a tech reviewer that I can't even count them anymore. So that means it works with my new iPhone Air that has Wi-Fi 7 and the entire new iPhone 17 and 17 Pro lineup as well. Plus any future Apple products that support Wi-Fi 7, like the new M5 iPad Pro. It costs less than most Wi-Fi 6E systems while offering future-ready tech like multi-link operation for the best optimized and fastest transfer speeds. It also has two 2.5 gigabit WAN LAN ports to hardwire something like a game console to get the best speeds possible there. Now you'll use the Deco app to walk through the installation in minutes and no tech expertise is required, plus TP-Link Home Shield is their premium security service that keeps your home network safe with cutting edge network and IoT protection. Now the Deco B5000 Wi-Fi 7 system is giving you Wi-Fi 7 future ready power at Wi-Fi 6 prices. I have the three pack system here and it costs $299, which is a great price compared to similar competition. So check out the link in the description to find out more about the TP-Link Deco B5000 Wi-Fi 7 system and pick one for yourself. Okay, let's talk about the new M5 14 inch MacBook Pro now. And remember, this is the only new M5 MacBook Pro model that they announced. So the expected M5 Pro or M5 Max 14 inch and 16 inch models are coming later on, but we just don't know when. Now the 14 inch gets all the benefits of the M5 chip that I talked about earlier. And I think the gains in gaming and GPU performance here are significant. Cyberpunk is nice and all. We need more top tier games like Marvel Rivals and Fortnite and Battlefield 6 or even get some PlayStation franchises like Spider-Man and Ghost of Yote to really flex the graphical prowess of the M5 here, but it's still not there yet. Now the new 14 inch can now be configured with up to four terabytes of storage where before there was a two terabyte limit and then the RAM still maxes out at 32 gigs for this model. Apple has some specific claims for the new M5 MacBook Pro with tasks like code compiling that gets a 20% faster performance boost and up to 1.6 times faster graphics performance in pro apps. We'll have to see how that really plays out in real time for me and yourself. But the design, the display, and the ports, they're all the same. There are no major changes. The M5 14 inch still only supports Wi-Fi 6E and not Wi-Fi 7 like the iPad Pro does. Also, this new MacBook Pro comes with a 70 watt power USB-C power adapter except in Europe. I'm not sure you all love that. I don't think so. Now pricing starts at $1,599 for 512 gigs of storage and 16 gigs of RAM and the 14 inch MacBook Pro will be available in silver and space black. You can pre-order today and it will be available on October 22nd. And finally, let's talk the new M5 Apple Vision Pro and honestly they have surprised me here, okay? Not only to go, you know, not enough for me to go and buy a new one, but Apple says the new M5 on Apple Vision Pro now renders 10% more pixels with its micro OLED displays for sharper images and crisper text, and also now brings refresh rates up to 120 hertz, reduced motion blur, and a more fluid display performance. What? Again, 
I'm not spending $3,500 for a new one, but I want that. And the original one that was around 90 to 100 hertz, depending on the content being displayed, so there would be no judder. The new M5 aids in faster performance and longer battery life along with these visual improvements. And the website says it gets up to three hours of video playback instead of the two and a half from the previous model. The battery is still going to be tethered, so just know that. The third generation GPU is really a significant boost here because the M2 from the first version had none of the hardware, accelerated ray tracing, and mesh shading features. So graphics will be better here for gaming specifically. Now there are no design changes, no new color options, but the new model now comes with a dual knit band that looks exactly like we expected, a cross between the solo knit band and the dual loop band if they got busy and had a baby. Now you can also purchase the dual knit band separately for $99. Now one thing that has been mentioned is that the total weight of the Apple Vision Pro has increased, but that is most likely due to the heavier weight of the dual knit band and will change depending on what you use. So it could be slightly heavier, but distribute weight better and actually still feel more comfortable to wear. We'll just have to wait and see how much more comfortable. Now the new Vision Pro also comes with Apple's new 40 watt dynamic power adapter that can go up to 60 watts max. It will still start at $3,499 and will be available on October 22nd. And I'm not saying I'm going to upgrade, but they did more than I thought with the Vision Pro. And I could see a few of you out there maybe, maybe pull the trigger on this that haven't before. But that's everything that Apple announced today. What do you think of the upgrades? Are you impressed by the new M5 or not? I think, of course, these are all incremental, but I, I think it's a little more than incremental for the iPad Pro specifically. And I'm actually a little jealous of the Vision Pro Fidelity upgrade, but I'll have to see it first. But hey, put your deep thoughts in the comments. They could be about the new M5 products or just personal, your choice. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up subs up and hit that notification bell ding to get all my latest videos when they drop and if you want more of that apple goodness you can check out my weekly apple bits xl audio podcast with the latest stories and special guests plus you can support all my content with an ad free version of the podcast early access to my content and exclusive content at patreon.com slash brian tong thanks for what you're watching these products will be here sooner rather than later we'll do a review and uh, until then we'll see you soon all right take care now peace and love